Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to today's stream uh, coming at you from this live storm platform. So kind of new, uh, new for me, but I know it's uh, been popular uh, at Prefect recently. Uh, been a while uh, to see everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Laura um, and big Prefect fan and uh, really excited to show you um, some cool new stuff that's been happening in Prefect since last uh, I took a look at it with y'all, um, I think in December. Um, in particular today, we're going to talk about Prefect Cloud 2. So we're gonna talk about how to use Prefect 2.0, AKA Orion. Um, you may already have uh, tried out um, or saw the stream last time about using the local Orion server but it's now compatible with Cloud 2.0 and Cloud 2.0 is also in beta now, so you can log in and try it out. But I'm gonna show you today if you haven't tried it yet, and then you can go try it whenever you want. Um, let's see, any other logistical points? I wanna talk about Cloud 2.0. Um, I have a couple of demos that I wanna show you. And then at the end, so um, I, I uh, put this demo together on Amazon EKS, AWS EKS. Um, so I like, this was my first time actually really like trying to use EKS, EKS, uh, the acronyms, EKS. Um, so there were some interesting like setup stuff that I ran into too. So I'm just going to mention, um, especially at the end, there's kind of like some very specific like IAM stuff that is relevant to EKS clusters uh, that I'll just share um, quickly um, in case that speeds anybody else up um, if uh, they're new to EKS too. Um, and otherwise, I'll be talking a little bit about um, the uh, the deployment uh, patterns uh, that are more like prefect specific um, as opposed to EKS specific as we go along. Okay, um, so I should probably share my screen and um, little chat bubbles are going on. Oh, everybody's saying hi, but I'm not gonna be able to see this when I share my whole screen. So uh, just FYI, um, I'll have to check it out later. And first we are going, I'm gonna share my whole desktop. So. We're going to do that, okay, and then we're uh, going to head on over to uh, some of my other windows, um, and in particular, I wanted to pull up one for the Prefect IO homepage. Okay, and let me also make sure that I hide this, um, so we're good. Okay, so I mentioned uh, we're talking about Prefect 2.0, right? So uh, if we kind of Hang out here on the Prefect IO website. We've got everything over in Prefect 1.0, Prefect Cloud 1.0. We're talking about Prefect 2.0 and Prefect Cloud 2.0. So uh, these are in beta um, now. Um, and um, I guess let's just uh, click on in. Um, so for Prefect Cloud beta, let me get my make sure I have my uh, info together. So. Uh, when you uh, come along here, uh, you can go ahead and log in. It's so easy to be at the beta URL. Here we go. Um, so you'll see something like this. Um, and then you can sign up for a free tier account. Um, I think the latest on um, that uh, is that you can have two users into your account. So you can invite your best friend. It could be me or it could be somebody else. Um, and you also have something else called a workspace. Um, and so the free tier account comes with one workspace. And then obviously there's ways to scale uh, that up um, as you go along. Um, you can, uh, yep, okay, that's it, right? Inviting your friends was the point that I wanted to make. So I already have this myself logged in over here um, in my purple tabs. Um, so I'm gonna close this one. Um, and here you can kind of see the sort of starting dashboard here for um, your workspaces. So workspaces is a concept that's specific to cloud um, as opposed to um, your regular like Orion server that you start yourself. So I've already got some stuff in here um, in, pre in cloud 2.0 y'all is my uh, workspace name. So just gonna click in here, oops, give it a wake up. There we go. Um, and you know, this, looks very similar, identical, right, to Orion server, if you've been running that. Um, this is just the cloud hosted version, right? So in this situation, um, you have your Prefect Cloud um, login. Um, I'm going to show you about how you can configure your um, CLI and all of your other uh, deployed uh, items to be configured to point at this API endpoint. So right now, this is at beta.prefect.io. Um, so 
I'll show you uh, kind of all of the settings for that. But basically everywhere that normally your settings would be looking at your local Orion server, or maybe if you're hosting your Orion server somewhere else, it's some API URL that you have managed, like maybe it's an IP address to some like uh, EC2 instance somewhere or using your domain name, et cetera. But um, in this case, you can instead use uh, Prefect Cloud as your hosted Orion server, and then you just reconfigure all of your API links to be pointing at that. And then you can use this hosted service provided by uh, the Prefect folks um, that uh, and not have to self-host uh, yourself. So that's the idea. And uh, let me slide a few more notes just to talk a little bit more about um, the demo that I want to show today. Um, so I'm going to be showing a couple uh, variations um, of a pretty basic flow, but the point that I wanna get across is about using um, work queues and agents. So this is very tied to kind of the deployment strategy of, um, of Prefect 2.0. So work queues and agents. So we'll talk about that in some, in some detail. We'll also need to configure uh, Prefect storage on the way. Um, and then uh, we're going to kind of go through a uh, little exercise here of um, in a world where you have more than one Kubernetes cluster that you would deploy um, your prefect flows to one that's like your dev cluster and one that might be your staging cluster and then of course you might have other environments like pre-prod and prod at some point um in a world where you have these two and they have different um compute uh provision they're provisioned differently from a compute or memory or anything uh perspective so we have one type of instances for the nodes in our dev cluster one type of instances ec2 instances for our the nodes in our staging cluster and ultimately the dev cluster is you know, smaller, doesn't have as much resources and staging has a lot more. So in that case, it would be nice, right? If you could um, control how much work gets uh, pushed into one cluster or the other. And we're gonna do that today with both work queues and um, uh, work queues, work queue um, limits and also task tag concurrency limits. So that's, that's where it's all coming together. Okay, so let's slide on down to the next uh, point in my notes here. Uh, let's get ourselves all set up here. So I have a terminal right now where I have prefect installed, right? So I have a prefect version. Um, and right now I am actually running off a uh, editable version, but basically uh, this morning, actually, there was a new release of um, prefect 2.0. Um, that's basically uh, very similar to um, this one because I was working off of uh, the freshest commits while I was uh, preparing the demo. Um, so you can give that a um, pip install um, into whatever your environment is. I have this kind of environment, Orion Dev. And then we already mentioned that you'll want to um, sign up for your Prefect Cloud free tier and then log in. So that's kind of the, the view that we were looking at here, right? That you'll at the beginning, you'll be asked to provision your first workspace, and I have made mine called Cloud 2.0, y'all. Okay. Then uh, the next thing is we need to make sure that this environment here, the, the uh, Prefect CLI, is configured to connect to this cloud endpoint, right? So not a local Orion server, but this hosted one at beta.prefect.io um, that is uh, provided by. Um, Prefect, right? So the way that you do this is you need to make an API key. So in uh, your uh, profile down here, there's a tab called API keys and you can set up some uh, API keys. You can create a new one. Um, so we can call this stream key, right? You can change like details about what, when it expires and then I'll show you what it looks like, something like this. You need to copy this and put it somewhere um, otherwise, you need to provision a new key later. Um, so once you have uh, that, then you can come over here to your CLI and run very simple Prefect Cloud login. So um, I think I'm already logged in. Oh, okay, here we go. It will ask you for your, that key that you just uh, provisioned. So you can go ahead and throw that in. And then it'll ask you to select a workspace. Um, Interestingly, this is named after what I previously called this workspace, uh, but now it's called Cloud 2.0, y'all. 
Um, but um, this is kind of the workflow. If you had more than one workspace, you could select from them. Um, and this is how uh, you have now any prefect, whatever that you run from this uh, terminal is now configured to be pointing at uh, our prefect cloud instance and specifically this workspace. So that's kind of a big difference um, just in terms of you'll see a lot of the um, but any of the API uh, uh, keys that I'm uh, configuring in different um, environments or literally when you look up at like the URL up here, you'll see that my account and my workspace are both sort of selectors into what API, uh, all the information you kind of need of what API this API key is actually good for um, and what this, uh, what API actually needs to be used because those are both kind of the pieces of information that you that you need now that we have this workspace concept. Okay, let's run a flow. Um, so let's go over to my Sublime Text where I have a little flow here um, called Basic Flow. And um, we can give this one, I actually want to make it even more basic than this first. Um, and literally just run it, run this flow. No. None of none of this deployment stuff yet. We'll we'll save that uh, for a second. Just reestablish kind of here for just the most basic flow. Uh, what's going on? So I'm going to give. Let's see. Am I in the right place? Yes. Going to give this a run, and you'll see that it uh, runs this um, right here in you know in the foreground of this um, uh, Python. Um, script call. Um, I do have all my debug turned on so we can see all the extra um, messages there. Um, but let me get my uh, act together here. Amber Ibis, Ibis, Ibis uh, is the name of this flow run. And you'll actually see over in Prefect Cloud that Amber Ibis is also represented. So this just running a flow once you've configured, uh, same, same uh, idea here as uh, your basic Orion server too, but just running a flow, even if you don't have anything else set up, since I configured my terminal to be looking at this uh, cloud uh, cloud 2.0, it's storing the state, it's storing the information of when, you know, when did this happen? Uh, what was the flow run? What was its final state, et cetera. So that's like the most basic, um, you know, interaction between just your regular flows and um, cloud. But what we really want to do is give cloud all of the other goodness uh, to be able to store more um, results uh, and uh, basically to store the results of um, uh, flows in some other storage and to be able to uh, manage multiple different deployments that might not be on my local computer, right? In particular, we're talking about those Kubernetes clusters on EKS that I'm going to show you later, right? So I want to be actually running not right here in my um, foreground in my terminal, I want to be running these in my Kubernetes cluster. So to do that, I need to set up uh, some prefect storage uh, so that prefect knows when I create deployments, where should that that uh, flow be actually stored? Because right now it's um, stored on my local computer. It needs to be in some remote location so that when other clusters need to access it, they can actually get there, right? I'm going to close my laptop at some point so my Kubernetes clusters can't contact my laptop anymore. Okay, so let's configure storage. I actually already have some of it configured in here, but I'm going to show you uh, what uh, that looks like. And that's called the CLI command to create storage is prefect storage create. So this will take you through a little like wizard kind of thing and you have a couple options. Um, so the, the uh, basic option is file storage, just kind of like your default. Um, and uh, then there's a bunch of other uh, options here. In particular, I'm going to highlight uh, S3 storage because that's what I'm going to be using. Um, but you can use uh, different uh, remote uh, storage locations in different formats. Um, so if we choose number five here, because I want to do S3 storage, uh, then it will take you through um, a couple options here for your bucket name and basically the uh, access credentials, um, particularly if they differ from your base AWS profile that you're um, terminal might already be uh, set up with um, if you've been using the AWS CLI from this terminal already. Um, so 
I kind of already have this set up, so I'm going to kind of put just random thing here, <laughs> uh, but bucket that I don't actually have. Um, but it will ask uh, for, for example, the region that your bucket is in. This is a, an, an AWS profile name that you might have. Um, and then you can also pass in the ID token and access key. And then you can give the whole storage configuration a name. So if you have something meaningful for this, like made up S3 storage in my case, um, then this will uh, actually save that uh, configuration um, and register it with, with this uh, name, as it says here, bet between both uh, your um, Prefect CLI right now and uh, Prefect Cloud in particular. So Prefect Cloud knows what the, the storage is, where it should go to find any, um, any uh, flow code uh, when it's asked, when an agent that's participating in that API, in the Cloud API to uh, go find a flow. So we'll see that in action later too, but this is the point where you configure that storage. So let me also show you um, Prefect Storage LS. So this is gonna list all the storages storages, uh, storage blocks that you have. Um, so I have a couple um, that I set up over the process of constructing this demo. Um, my default one here, there's a concept of your default storage, um, is this one, which you can't really see the whole name, but the sort of config name for it is Orion2-demo. And this is uh, pointing at a S3 bucket that I have. Um, let's go check out S3 really quick. Over here, so I had pre-provisioned this S3 bu this S3 bucket Orion 2 demo um, to hold all of my uh, flow code and also my results. So this is the actual bucket that this is. Um, oops, not this. I want to go over here. That this storage. There we go. Is actually referring to. Okay. So one other tip here is that um, if you change your mind about what default storage that you want to uh, have. Um, you There's just a single uh, CLI command here. Um, so you, you can uh, grab off the ID. It's based on the ID. So prefix storage set default, and then you pass in the ID name uh, basically from this uh, view. So that's how you can set your storage. OK, so again, this was all some pre-configuration so that cloud knows, all right, when you ask me to or when somebody, when an agent asks to do some work, I know where to tell them where the where the flow is at, right? Okay, so the next thing that we need to configure is a work queue. So a work queue is, let's go over here, uh, visible in the uh, in the Orion uh, UI today. Uh, so I have a couple of work queues here, and work queues are basically kind of the configuration of for a given given prefect agent that's able to like pull work from the API, what's kind of like the funnel or like the filter by which it decides which um, scheduled flow runs to actually work on. So this way you can kind of, um, you know, send uh, different uh, types of work to different places. In our case today, I'm going to leverage this to send some types of work to my dev cluster, some types of work to my staging cluster, and also configure basically like how wide that funnel is or isn't with the work uh, queue concurrency um, uh, attribute, uh, something that you can set per work queue to affect how, how much pulling that agent is really doing, right? So that's the connection between these two. Folks from Prefect 1.0 might remember that um, agents previously were very uh, specific to the type of work that they could take. Um, and that was kind of like embedded in the individual agent that you started. In Prefect 2.0, the idea is that that type of uh, you know configuration of which things am I actually pulling is in this work queue. And then the agent itself is like not really all that special. It's the same agent all the time. Um, and this work queue and the, the deployments themselves have the configuration that then tells the agent uh, what how to actually run that job. The agent isn't like holding on to that information itself. So hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for everybody to keep track of what configuration is being set where. Um, for Prefect 1.0, it could sometimes get a little bit confusing of what information was coming from the flow, what was coming from the agent, how those properties were merged, what that meant for like the next step, right? Uh, so this way it's a little bit more spread out. Okay, 
So uh, you can make these in the UI. Uh, there's this beautiful create work queue button. Uh, you can give them a name. So we could make my, uh, let's see, uh, let's call it random queue. Just, just making this up. You give them some names, a totally random queue I made to show everyone how to make a work queue in the UI, right? Um, and here you can set that concurrency limit, right? So this is going to come up uh, where we'll see this in action with the actual demo. Um, but you can set that this work queue like can only pull one uh, flow run at a time, or it can pull 10 flow runs at a time, or it can pull 100 flow runs at a time. If there's no limit, it will just keep pulling as, as much as fast as it can, basically. Um, the other properties that you can configure for your work queue is again, that like filtering question of what are we actually going to, to pull in? So right now the properties that are exposed to you are tags. So you can tag different uh, deployments. So you can use those tags here. What the flow runner is. So each deployment um, has a, a flow runner so that it knows like what style of flow runner it should start. Uh, there's universal Kubernetes Docker and sub process. So you can actually check those all up here or you can, uh, specifically say this work queue is just for these deployments if you have certain deployments in mind. So th this was all, um, you know, check boxy over here. Um, I'm going to maybe, uh, oops, make up a tag that I don't actually have any deployments set up just to make this work queue uh, not uh, do anything really and give that a save. So once you do this, uh, you have um, your work queue created. And this is how you'll see in this little uh, tooltip tool here um, that uh, this work queue is a, is a property you directly need to attach to any agent that you start. Um, so you can do it by ID. You can also do it by the work queue name. Um, so like this random queue name and I will look it up. But this is how you actually start your agents. Um, and associate them with a given work queue. So every agent has a work queue. This is, this is a required property. Um, so um, that's how, again, it knows how to pull what it wants to pull. Um, so that's how those two things go together. Okay, I keep talking about deployment and we haven't really taken a look at one yet. We have talked about them in a previous stream, but let me um, showcase that a little bit here um, and also the process to create one. So uh, let me go back to uh, my flow here. So I had kind of edited this um, to just like run the flow without any deployment information. But let's take that away and go back to the world of deployments. Um, a prefect deployment is uh, fundamentally a uh, this deployment spec object that takes some uh, metadata like the name of the deployment, the flow, what flow runner it should use. You can also set tags at this level. Um, up if you're using like a different type of flow runner like the kubernetes flow runner we'll see you later you can pass in like other environment information or like the image that uh kubernetes should start for that uh flow runner but basically this is another place uh for more configuration on how this deployment actually occurs um and then this plus um the work queue is what the agent will sort of filter off of the work queue to decide what to do and then use this deployment spec to decide how to deploy it so um, I've switched this up now to actually have a deployment spec instead of just run when the script is called. And so to actually um, leverage this deployment spec in Prefect, you create the deployment and then you run the deployment. So it's a little bit like registering from Prefect 1.0. It's a little bit different, um, but uh, it's really only similar in the sense that there is like this deployment uh, create step and then you interact with that deployment object that's now like an API object in the Orion API. Um, that you can uh, access from the CLI or you can access from the UI or um, the REST API or whatever you want. Okay, so I have, again, this basic flow that's now configured, now set up to uh, when, uh, now set up to have this deployment spec. So I am going to go back to my CLI and I'm going to use prefect create, uh, oops, it's prefect deployment, create, there we go. And then you put in the name of this file that has the deployment spec. So in my case, my deployment spec and my flow are in the same file. They don't have to be. Um, you can have um, a totally different file with all with this single deployment spec in it or all of your deployment specs in it if you want to. Um, but in this case, I'm keeping it kind of simple and everything is together. Um, so if we run this, 
then uh, it does some validation. Um, and in this case, it says that there's no deployment specifications found because I didn't see my sublime text. So let's do that first. Let's save this file and then try and create our deployment. Okay, so I'll do some uh, validation. If there's something wrong with my deployment spec, it would warn me here, but once it's determined that we're good, you'll see that it takes this flow script and it uses my S3 storage, right? That we configured before and basically puts it there. So this actual like information about this flow um, that is needed by any flow runner that might be anywhere in the world uh, that I deploy an agent for somewhere uh, needs to have access to this flow. Again, not literally the copy that's on my laptop. It, if the case is as it will be that I'm using some remote Kubernetes clusters, it needs to be somewhere else. So this is where that storage is coming up. Um, to actually store this uh, flow there. And then it creates uh, this uh, uh, deployment based on uh, some properties that I set in here, the flow name, and then the deployment uh, name as well. So you can see it kind of has this like repo uh, or org like repo type of um, look here um, that this is the demo basic example uh, deployment. So as it says, we can also give it an inspect. This is kind of like the describe command for any uh, prefect or Orion API, Prefect 2.0 uh, API object. Um, so we can take a look at some of the uh, metadata here. So um, not too interesting, uh, mostly uh, stuff that was set over here, but there's some you know, auto-generated things, of course, like the flow ID um, and um, it knows uh, this here block ID is a reference to the storage that it's using. Um, and then you can see since I uh, set a sub-process flow runner that it has uh, the subprocess flow runner configured, and then everything else is kind of in its defaults because I didn't I didn't pass anything into my subprocess flow runner. This is what the deployment. So this is what the deployment looks like. So if we want to run this deployment, then uh, we have another CLI command prefect deployment run right, and we basically give it the name which I've already managed to forget. Basic example. There we go um, of the deployment. So this is going to basically say to the Orion API, hey, can you like tell somebody who has a work queue, uh, you know, some agent somewhere would probably like to know that, you know, Laura wants to run this uh, deployment. So this basically puts that information that like intended state of uh, wanting a run, uh, this flow run in the Orion API so that agents can uh, consume that information um, on the other side, wherever they're hosted. Okay, economic quaka is who we are looking for. So if we head on over to my workspace and take a look at my flow runs, you'll see we have economic quaka. Oh, he crashed, how sad. Um, I must have a uh, agent running somewhere uh, that I didn't clean up before and seems to be ill. Um, but uh, the important part here uh, is that this is how we can communicate the intent to run a deployment to the Orion API. You can also do this from the UI in this deployments tab. Um, all I actually have a couple different um, local example. Um, mine's called basic example, actually. There we go, basic example case. Um, there's a quick run button over here. So you can also, you know, run a bunch of, run a bunch of them. This is basically like, Go, coming over here and you know running this command like 10 times, right? So same idea, one's from the CLI, one is from the UI, so you can orchestrate this uh, either way that you like. Okay, so looks like uh, my uh, mysterious agent somewhere is still um, having a grand old time. Um, so uh, we will have to uh, track him down later, um, but let me switch over to the um, Kubernetes example so that I can show you how these deployments differ um, and the agent uh, um, deployment also differs um, for uh, the Kubernetes case, which I think is kind of a more um, production uh, case that people uh, probably want to be going towards. So uh, let me go back to my uh, uh, sublime text here to show you that I have a um, basic flow dash Kates, uh, which actually has a bunch of other stuff uh, going on in it because I wanted to have some more um, visibility of um, a couple different things. Um, 
But before diving into all of those details, I think the thing that I really want to highlight is that I have this appointment spec here um, that uh, specifies, I'm actually going to take this off first, um, specifies a name, light flow, again, I've just put it in the same place uh, as my flow up here, which is called basic flow, and then the flow runner. So uh, previously in my basic flow, I made this subprocess flow runner with no uh, other properties. Um, if you use a Kubernetes flow runner, what you're saying is that this deployment, once the agent has uh, taken it on, what it should do is then deploy it as a Kubernetes job. Uh, so it should uh, deploy the flow runner as a, in a Kubernetes cluster. So it needs to know some Kubernetes stuff, like what image are we using um, and what image pull policy uh, do we need to have. Um, and in my case, I'm also passing along some environment for the job to know what prefect API and what prefect API key to use. So this is another interjection point for that, um, that the same idea of prefect cloud login, because now I'm going to be asking my uh, flow runner to do some work that interacts with the API as opposed to just my uh, local terminal. So it also needs to know the same type of information um, of where is the API that I want to work on, work against, and in our case, it's cloud 2.0, and what is the API key that gives me uh, the authentication into that. <coughs> so um, let me uh, go through all of the motions to also uh, create this deployment. Uh, it's deployment, then create. And then the name of my file, which in this case is basic low .py. So same idea, looks very, very similar to before um, because I'm still using that same storage. We're using the same S3 storage, but now it has this different name, of course, based on the um, deployment spec and the um, flow name itself. Okay, so let me talk a little bit more about our clusters or AWS clusters. So I mentioned that I have two EKS clusters, actually I have three because I was uh, testing with one, but the two I want to highlight here are dev and staging. So I have these two um, EKS clusters um, that have already run uh, some work. Um, so there will be some other stuff in here uh, from uh, that, but I want to highlight that I have a uh, workload in both clusters. Uh, that is named after its Kate's queue. And I have um, this one in my dev cluster is called Kate's dev queue. And then the one in my backup and go to my staging cluster. Oops, not nodes, workloads. Um, then I have one called Kate's staging queue, right? So I've purposely named them after um, the work queue that they're configured um, to to use. So how I deployed these agents uh, here is I have this agent manifest um, that um, is basically just deploying um, the uh, prefect uh, 2.0 image um, running prefect agent start. Um, and it's uh, specifying a work queue, which I'm actually pulling off of uh, the Kubernetes um, label here, which I configured to be specific to the work queue. So uh, just to tie all that together over here, this work queue, Kate's dev queue and Kate's staging queue, that's uh, also the name and the labels for these agents that I'm deploying into these clusters. And then that's also the name of the work queue that gets passed to prefect agent start. So said another way, the process that's running in my staging cluster is called Kate's staging queue, and it's a prefect agent that is pulling from the Kate staging queue work queue. So um, this queue here, which has its own configuration. And then my um, the one in my dev cluster is basically just, you know, this is changed like this, um, so that it has this name Kate's dev queue, and that the actual process that it's running is prefect agent start Kate's dev queue. So it's an uh, agent that's pulling from the um, work queue that I called Kate's dev queue, which is this one up here. So you can see that I have a couple different property, only one really different property besides the name. Uh, yeah, that is, I 
guess two different properties. So my Kate's dev queue is configured to have one concurrency limit and to take um, work that's tagged with the tag dev. And my Kate's staging queue has no concurrency limit and it's tagged, it will only pull flow runs that are tagged with the tag staging. So this is how I'm redirecting, uh, like I could be making all sorts of flow runs um, in my UI, but only the ones that are tagged staging will go to this Kate staging queue agent, which I've deployed in my staging cluster. And only the ones tagged, close this, only the ones tagged with dev are going to be pulled by the agent that I've deployed in my dev cluster um, because they're uh, it's configured to use this work queue. So that's how we're kind of segregating um, the um, the uh, information or the uh, flow runs uh, that I'm going to be starting over here into dev and staging. <laughs> okay. Quick drink break. All right, so I showed how to deploy the agent and we saw in uh, our little AWS view that these agents uh, are really there, right? They're already running, I had them pre-running before. Okay. So let's um, actually observe some of these agents picking up uh, some of this work um, based on the uh, work queue configuration. So let me go back over to my basic locates. I'm gonna throw back in my tags configuration to specify that for this deployment for my basic locates, I wanna run it in depth. So I'm like working on this, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I haven't finalized, I'm developing on this, on this flow, right? So I want to deploy it into the dev cluster that I have access to. So since I know that the work queues are set up so that uh, the dev tag will go to the dev cluster, then I will tag this deployment with this uh, dev tag so that I know that it will go to uh, that work queue, or sorry, to that agent uh, configured with that work queue. So let's give it another, uh, deploy. So today to update tags on a deployment, uh, you run prefect deployment create again. Um, there is a direction that we're going where something like the tag is more, um, uh, is a type of configuration that can be set more easily in the UI. Uh, so you can kind of change things on the fly when it comes to um, your tags. Um, but right now I'm going, I'm in this case, I'm recreating the deployment so that it will pick up the new tag. We can actually use the same inspect command to see it both from here and we can also see it from the UI uh, that somewhere in here, the tags are now set to depth. Okay, so then let's, let me set up everything so that we can observe uh, what's going on. So I'm gonna go over to another tab here and make sure that I'm in the right, um, cluster, which I'm not. So I'm going to um, remember what my contacts are. And then I'm going to use this one. Okay, so right now, I have deployed in this dev cluster, as mentioned, and we kind of saw in the uh, AWS UI, this Kate's dev queue, this is the agent that's just running and waiting for for any sign that there's something uh, for his work queue. So we can actually uh, start up the logs and follow them. So we can take a look at this. So it's quite chatty because um, I put a uh, debug on, but you can see it's constantly checking for flow runs. I don't even know if we can, here we go, we can get to the top. Um, but at the very beginning, you'll see that it's configured to look for work from this queue, Kate's dev queue, right? So we'll just fully, connecting all of those stuff there. So here's my agent. So if either from the CLI or from the UI, I run a deployment that um, can be picked up by this work queue. So this one here, Kate's example that has th this dev tag is the one uh, that we're talking about um, in here. So I'm going to give it a quick run from here um, or we could do the same thing over here again, prefect deployment, um, run, uh, demo, Kate's example, right? Those are both the exact same um, type of thing. And then 
uh, we should see uh, we've got something running over here, but we can also slide over to uh, my uh, agent who also is talking about glittering swan um, because it was pulling, pulling, pulling off of this work queue. And finally, it heard my message um, that I had a flow run that was tagged with dev that was for Kubernetes flow runner. Those are that is those are the two properties that this work queue is configured to uh, to uh, filter on. And I was like, cool, I'm going to do this. Um, let's call it Clearing Swan, right? And like, let's do this thing because uh, I'm the agent who's responsible for making sure that this work gets done. So we can also uh, click in on the UI to see, uh, you know, the interface of uh, this information uh, from the uh, flow runner being reported into a preset cloud so we can actually monitor it from here instead of monitoring our agent directly um, and we can see uh, that it uh, did did its work it's uh, kind of a little basic flow that just uh, kind of does some random sleeping and emits some uh, random um, you know sleeping for nine sleeping for seven type thing so uh, but we can see it in here and then one other place that we can take a look at uh, what's going on here is again over in EKS, right? So I need to go back to my dev cluster because that's where we ran this. But if we take a look at the workload, I'm going to filter this a little bit to my default uh, namespace. You'll see here's Glittering Swan themselves, right? So this was the Kubernetes job that the flow that the agent started because it saw that I wanted to use a Kubernetes flow runner. It was like, okay, cool. That means I need to make this job, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is what it actually provisioned um, in order to get get that flow run done right so this that is the uh connection point here hopefully that cleared it up a little bit of the work queue the properties of the work queue the agent that's running and waiting for you know this work queues me to send a message that conforms to its expectations of the work queue and then it actually starts to do some work that work is uh configured based on the flow runner that that deployment actually had. And that's why in this case, this agent decided to run this as a Kubernetes job instead of as, for example, a sub process, um, because I specifically said use the Kubernetes flow runner for this deployment. So that's kind of how that string all goes together. Okay, so the um, next thing that I really want to highlight is about this sort of promotion story of we can keep leveraging tags to once I've decided that I'm kind of cool with my flow now um, and I'm ready for it to run on some some faster machinery or at least some a bigger cluster in my case I have um, my staging cluster has more nodes and they are each individually bigger like M series instances instead of T series instances um, we can change the tag so I'm going to change this to the staging tag and this is what changes the any of the flow runs I run from the CLI or quick run from the UI um, tied to this deployment spec, this is what says, er, don't go to you know that old work queue that you used to be into that would take you to the dev cluster, go instead to the staging, um, the agent that's configured to use the staging work queue. So this is the property here that I'm using to sort of promote my flow from my kind of like baby dev cluster that uh, doesn't have that much strength behind it to my staging cluster. And then ultimately you could do this to pre-prod or prod um, at some point too. So again, today you need to um, re recreate the deployment, right? Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Create, um, and let me make sure I saved my sublime text. Looks like yes, but it never hurts to save it again. Um, all right, and then Let's go to basic flow Kate's is what this one is called and redeploy it. And then again, we can give it a, another inspect. We can see that the tags are going to be updated to uh, staging instead right here. We can also observe this in the UI. We head back out to all of my deployments. We can see that it's now switched to the staging tag instead. And then let me get my other agent uh, over in my staging uh, cluster um, viewing viewable right now so that we can watch uh, what it's up to uh, while it's doing it. So again, I'm 
my kubectl is right now configured for my dev cluster, so I need to, to switch over. And again, I didn't give these, um, didn't really give these good names, so I need to look up uh, my context again. There we go, I want this one. All right, and then, wow. There we go. Um, so now I'm looking at my staging uh, cluster. And inside the staging cluster, I have this Kate staging queue. Again, that's named after the work queue staging that will only pick up work from something that has a staging tag on it. So let's watch it go. Always, always listening. Always, always listening. Um, and uh, maybe, I don't know, pick a couple off, see what happens, right? All right, so we can see uh, back here, it's gonna start picking up these flow runs, right? So there's like lots of words here, but it's submitting lots of flow runs because I just clicked that button a bunch of times, right? So we've got an eager kangaroo, we've got a cooperative salmon, it looks like, a horned mouse and a crimson chihuahua, that's unexpected, and striped platypus. I would think crimson chihuahua is the winner right now. Um, all right, so we can uh, come over here and see our flow runs have already very quickly uh, completed. Um, but we can cross check over in uh, EKS again and staging, check on my workloads, uh, limit it a little bit to um, default, and we can see cooperative salmon, crimson chihuahua, my favorite, eager kangaroo, and horned mouse, and striped platypus are all hanging out in here. So those were the Kubernetes jobs. So again, uh, the tag, I changed it, and now that all got routed to a new cluster, uh, to the staging cluster instead, by virtue of that tag being changed on the deployment. So one interesting point here um, is that you'll see that the deployment is just like fully, totally changed, right? Like the previous, the fact that it previously had a dev tag is no longer like transparent here. And in fact, it's only really transparent in the sense that prior um, flow runs know what tag they had when they ran. Um, but uh, the deployment itself has kind of uh, lost that information. So this is kind of an interesting point. Uh, there's definitely some discussions going on about you know, how should this operate uh, when flow runs are in flight? Um, should a flow run um, basically kind of similar to as we have observed, um, basic use the tag from the time that the flow run is scheduled from the time that the flow run actually runs? Um, is there you know, some other mutation that we should be uh, or some other uh, preservation of history that we should be uh, considering in terms of what time it actually was scheduled or run to con run compared to when the deployment uh, happened. Uh, should every new tag be a new deployment? That makes it kind of a, a little bit more difficult um, if you're uh, tagging deployment IDs directly. Um, but all of those uh, concepts or ideas are something that I think uh, we could uh, talk ab about in Slack or otherwise on the on the contributor side if people are interested in how that actually gets implemented. So definitely uh, shout it out if you uh, have an idea about that. Okay, I know I'm going a little bit slow compared to everything that I want to do. So let me just highlight one more uh, factor here um, that's hidden in my um, in my uh, flow code and highlight it. Um, and then I'll uh, uh, publish the gist that has kind of all the steps to go through too. So then you can give it a try yourself. Okay, so we've been talking about like work queues filtering, right? I keep making this motion um, of my uh, anthropomorphization of what agents are doing. Um, so uh, that is all based on the uh, these tags um, and it also uh, takes into account this concurrency limit, which is the concurrency limit for how many flow runs, right? So my Kate's dev queue is saying I can only do one flow run at a time. If I like press like quick run, quick, quick run, quick run, quick run over and over again, um, but against the Kate's dev queue, then only one of them goes at a time. So they'll just like be stuck in pending. But the point is that I have decided that my dev cluster is not strong enough to handle our, like an arbitrary number of flow runs. So that's on purpose, right? So this is how to control that at the flow run level. There's also a concept called task concurrency limits. And this is a way to limit individual tasks and how, um, how often they can run. 
So a uh, compelling use case for this is if you have a uh, type of task that uh, like can, needs to needs only needs to only be run once a kind of classic case is like if you have a database connection open um and you don't want to have lots of or can't have lots of database connections open you only want that test to be run once um then the way that you can can configure that is by putting these tags on the individual tasks and then configuring a task concurrency limit so to briefly show you uh, that how to actually create a task concurrency limit uh, this is uh, right now only um, composable in the CLI or using the Orion client in Python uh, directly. Um, but the exact command, which I will double check to make sure I don't say the wrong thing, is prefect concurrency dash limit create, and then the name of the tag. So in my case, I have this tag named DB. This is my uh, task tag that I want to target. And then an integer of what uh, limit you want to create. So in my like example case, what I'm saying, I only want to have one database connection at a time. I only want one task um, to be using my database connection at a time. So when uh, you do this, it will create uh, this concurrency limit here. Um, you can um, observe the concurrency limit. Uh, got to spell it right though. With ls. Um, you have a couple uh, command, oops, I have to do help if I want help, right? <laughs> um, you have a couple commands here, and uh, as usual, we have inspect, which is kind of like the describe for uh, any prefect object. We already saw what was going on there. And then ls is to uh, view our currency limits. So we can run ls. And in particular, this ls command um, will show us how many active uh, task runs there are. If we do a inspect, not describe, uh, on this uh, specific one, it actually has this output that will literally show you which task run ID right now has the lock, or if you have a higher uh, concurrency limit than one, um, all the ones that have the lock, right? So uh, this is a way that you can kind of inspect like that little, like it's it's not our, uh, our uh, agent, but it's this other separate like bottleneck that is just watching this uh, test tag and like, Guarding, guarding the all agents and and all uh, really all task runners to say you can't start this task until I can grab a lock on uh, this concurrency limit because I only have room for one at a time. So this is how you can configure that uh, on a per task level. So you can combine the um, work queue limits and the task uh, individual task limits to uh, configure uh, either the overall flow of uh, information to your agents um, on the work queue side or very precisely about individual tasks um, especially if they have a uh, really important um, uh, connection limit uh, like a database um, that you need to uh, control on a more global scale okay i've talked on and on and on uh, hopefully i got to just about everything Ooh, one one big one other highlight that i uh, really want to bring up is that literally like 30 minutes before this uh, stream started, there's a new view. Literally, it's the URL into new. <laughs> um, oops, I got logged out somehow. Let's go. Let's get back in. I didn't do OAuth, and now you, uh, you will be trapped to uh, watch me type in my uh password slowly thrillingly wow wouldn't it be great if i had uh properly configured uh google oauth instead <laughs> probably would have been the best okay so back here we go so this is in this new view so if you tack on new to the end of your url and prefect cloud um, you'll get this new type of view. So let me um, filter filter it out a little bit so it looks uh, more uh, how we're going. Um, so this is a, a different uh, style of view of looking at your run history. Um, 
And you can see like when I first saw this, I was like, oh, it's kind of like Seaborn, right? So it's kind of got a different type of like scatter plot kind of vibe compared to some of the other view, the radar view and the for tasks, the radar view and um, the sort of like more, it's not really Gantt chart, but more Gantt-y, I would say. Um, but here you can uh, look at some um, very aggregate metadata um, at the uh, flow run level um, in the in this type of view. So um, this is like super, super alpha. Like again, I mentioned literally like 15 minutes um, and um, like before, before the stream happened. Um, so uh, definitely check it out um, if you have a Prefect uh, Cloud account right now. I wanna give a shout out because Chris uh, told me that um, the, um, let me give a shout out to Craig and Marichka for working really hard on this view right before the stream so that everybody can see it. So thank you so much, Prefect, uh, Prefect team, uh, and especially you two for uh, working on that uh, so we can see this cool view. So you can see, you can kind of like hover over and see, you know, lots of uh, metadata here. Uh, you can switch out to some different um, auto filters, and then you can also change uh, the filters uh, like you, like in other uh, views. Again, it, it's kind of alpha, so uh, feel free to try and break it <laughs> and let everybody know. Um, I would say probably the number one thing is that the sort of like interaction effect on this um, Y axis and like the timeline uh, view is still being kind of like fully figured out for scale purposes. You can see that I've got a bunch of, you know, lots of failures, but that didn't happen, happen for very long. Um, but, you know, if I just pull pull those out, uh, we get more um, interesting um, visualization of how long my different task runs take. So this is a really cool new feature. Definitely looking for feedback um, from everybody. If you can uh, give it a look, just add slash new at the end of your uh, cloud um, URL and you'll be able to see this too. Okay, so um, I, We'll probably close it there because I've been talking for a whole hour almost, but I did mention at the beginning that there are some like specific AWS deployment stuff uh, that I kind of went through. For folks who have like lots of AWS EKS experience, it's probably like not news to you. Um, but um, this is kind of pulled from lots of different AWS docs to like really finally get my cluster together. Um, so I'll just publish this in a gist so that everybody can see uh, basically what I did. The important parts basically is that uh, creating a EKS cluster, there's a lot of configuration in AWS, so they have this nice um, EKS control uh, thing to um, specify, uh, to basically do a lot of that work for you. There's a lot of specific labeling and templates and stuff uh, that it can uh, kind of set some default on your behalf. Um, to actually get console access to like see the workloads like I was showing you today, you have to give your user access in this very specific way using a AWS auth config map against that cluster um, and also to apply some R back there. Um, so there's some examples um, in the docs that I'll link you to. Um, and then the workloads themselves need permission. I think this is something that uh, a lot of folks might uh, get tripped up on when they're first trying to get moved from their uh, local prefect deployment to their um, remote storage plus uh, their agent and their its its uh, jobs or whatever running um, in Kubernetes wherever some remote place uh, needs to have permissions to contact that S3 storage. It also needs to um, have permissions to uh, watch jobs, which is actually controlled not by I am, but by the Kubernetes in cluster RBAC. So there's kind of some different levels of permissions that need to be given to make sure that that all works together. Um, so in the AWS case, uh, there's some very specific ways to attach that um, AWS um, services permission, specifically S3 in my case, because that's what was the storage I was using. There's a very specific way to create that I am uh, properly in AWS and then annotate the service account for your workloads in Kubernetes to use that. And then you do need this other um, in cluster RBAC for <coughs> a Kubernetes flow runner in particular to have all of the in cluster permissions that it needs to um, kick off jobs and observe them. So just to briefly show you that um, this is this agent job access uh, YAML that I deployed in all of my clusters uh, to tie together um, that the default service account, which is what I'm having all of my agent workloads uh, use. Um, is bound to this cluster role that has uh, 
basically all the get list and watch on pods and pod logs, which it needs to um, watch the pods that are underneath the jobs that it starts, and then to have all crud on jobs because it needs to be able to create jobs um, to uh, complete the work of, of the Kubernetes flow runner. So I'll post all of that into here just so that you can all have my, oops, hi Slack. You all can have my uh, version of it in case it uh, speeds up any deployment for you. And I think that's just about it for uh, today. I'm gonna uh, pop in too. Laura, oh, do you have, hi. hey, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> so Laura, you have time to take any questions? Uh, sure. Just one quick question. So we've been answering them in the background. I know you have this oh, great. See it. And so again, know, thank, yeah. thank you for, for presenting. Um, so a question from, this is more, I think of like a philo philosophical question, right? From Talak okay. Mahdi. Uh, mm -hmm. And so feel free to answer. We can always defer it. Uh, but why can't Prefect do what Dask does? Take care of all the GCP AWS stuff. So I think this is more a philosophical yeah. question. And I think you've been yeah. able to answer. Yeah. So, I mean, I think um, I'll give my perspective. So the um, Dask, uh, what I can't remember the name right now. I'm blanking of the Python library that uh, basically provisions Dask clusters for you. Um, but um, that is uh, like a pretty heavyweight, very opinionated uh, platform uh, for deploying your um, your Dask architecture. And um, I, as I understand it too, it was like a long time coming for Dask to implement it too. And then it still is, there's a lot of folks who need to customize it extensively. Um, though obviously it is really useful to um, uh, spin something up really fast, especially when you're just getting started. Um, in general, I think that, uh, especially from Prefect uh, 1.0, um, like Prefect wants to provide a lot of flexibility for you to manage your execution environment however that you want um, and in particular like way from the beginning of like the benefit of like the hybrid architecture where like the api is like completely doesn't really know how like your code runs um is kind of philosophically a little bit uh tied to that idea that like your execution environment people need to make it all sorts of different ways you need to make it really flexible like even some of the, the features that I showed today are kind of representative of the fact that people have lots of different execution environments, their dev, their staging, maybe they have their like GPU clusters or like whatever super custom stuff that's running their like machine learning uh, training flows or whatever. <coughs> so since there's just so, so much diversity of how people are actually going to run this in production, um, I think that's fundamentally where a lot of that comes from. That being said, I do think there are is work towards utilities that makes it easier to uh, spin a lot of the stuff up. I'm uh, going to be sharing, for example, <coughs> my <coughs> sorry, agent manifest, um, which does require you to have already provisioned a, a cluster, of course, um, but it is one one more step on the way. Um, but uh, that's something that's actively being worked on uh, on the uh, prefect side. So I think some more like opinionated versions, um, especially of pieces <coughs> on the way <coughs> are coming. Um, but uh, yeah, and happy to uh, talk more on Slack or uh, pull in more of the Prefect uh, team on Slack to comment on that too. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the last question. We had a, a whole bunch, but it's really good discourse uh, in the chat. So I'll let you wrap it up. I just want to pop in and say hi. So you, you can wrap it up in the middle cool. of the stream. All right, I'm going to make you all Zoom again so that I can uh, disable my screen sharing and see, see you all. Uh, uh, myself um but thanks so much for coming by uh really happy to uh kick around uh, the latest in orion for you and uh give you some uh some uh ideas or maybe inspire you to try it out yourself uh definitely dm me or in, in the uh, community channel on slack if you have some more questions about what happened in this uh demo today and then i will uh, publish the gist uh, which will be attached in um slack and then in the uh um you know, later YouTube upload of this uh, as well. So really happy to have hung out with everybody. Uh, I was hoping that this lava lamp would warm up by the end of this, but it's still solid. So that, that one didn't make it, but at least all of our flows ran. So thank you again, everybody for coming. And that is the show. Uh, I'll see you next time.